Hello everyone and welcome to the 26 Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial is going to apply to all Source Engine games that support the Blend Modulation Texture Parameter. The Blend Modulate Texture Parameter allows us to change the transition between two blend textures on a displacement. It essentially allows us to stamp patterns into the texture. This is very useful for if we want sand between bricks, as we'll do in this tutorial here, or snow or moss on a wall. This is also used inside of the new DE Inferno for the bricks behind the degraded plaster. Before we begin, we need to have two textures that we can bring into Hammer so we can actually create our blend modulation. I have two textures here. One is a cobblestone and another one is some sand. We're going to blend the sand in between the cracks of the cobblestone. The easiest way to have a blend modulation texture work is to use the height map. A height map is used to tell game engines and other things how high certain pixels on a texture are. If you're trying to create a blend modulate map from already existing textures, odds are you'll probably have a normal map. Height maps aren't actually used inside of Source Engine all too often. We can reverse engineer this normal map into a height map that will work for our purposes. You can use any tool you want, such as Crazy Bump, which is a paid option, Bitmap to Material, or even Substance Designer 5. A free option is Awesome Bump, and there is a link to that in the description below. If we open Awesome Bump up, we're presented with the default UI. Now this isn't an awesome bump tutorial, so I'll just show you guys how we're going to get our height map from a normal map. The first thing we'll want to do is disable the maps in awesome bump that we don't need. The only ones we care about are normal and height map, which is the arrow that points up and these little mountains down here. We can uncheck all of these and then go over to the normal tab. From here, we want to click this little floppy disk, which is the load button. We can select our normal map, now that the normal map is loaded, our 3D view is kind of messed up. We don't really care about that right now. If we go over to the height tab and click recalculate from normal output, we'll get this shape here. This isn't quite what we want. If we look at the height map from the actual source material, it's not even close. If we come over to the normal tab again and click invert G, it looks like the bricks are now popping out at us inside of this blue normal map. If we go to the height tab again and click recalculate from normal, this is much closer to what we want. A blend modulate texture works by revealing the black parts of this modulate mask first and then the white ones later on as we paint more alpha onto the texture. This means that as soon as we start to paint, the sand will appear in between the bricks of the cobblestone. We can play with some of these values over here to get more of what we're looking for to have some detail in between the bricks and not have it be full black and full white on the bricks themselves. After playing with the image general settings over on the left, we can go ahead and save this height map. If we go to the output tab and then click this button here, we can give it a folder and click select. Down at the bottom, it will tell us what maps it's outputting. And then once it's done, these images will be on our desktop. It exported all the maps, but the only one we care about is the height map. Comparing the two height maps side by side with the one that we made ourselves on the left and the one that came with the texture on the right, they're pretty close to each other, although the one on the left is a little bit brighter. This doesn't matter in the long run since this is a modulation map. We just want to get the shapes in here so that way when we paint it, these shapes emerge in the blend. With modulation maps, you don't need to be perfect. A lot of cool things can come from just playing around and making happy accidents. Now we need to make the modulation texture inside of Photoshop. I'll start by opening up my height map. And we want to make sure that the image is not gray at 16. We want our image mode to be RGB with 8 bits a channel. Blend modulation maps use two channels inside of an image. The green channel defines the actual stamp pattern that emerges as we paint our alpha, and the red channel is the softness at the paint. I'll explain the red channel a little bit more later on. The only channel we actually care about right now is the green channel. Since we're only working in one channel, it's totally fine to work in black and white with RGB enabled, and then we can just clear these channels out later. Since one of my textures is sand, I want some of this information to be in my modulation map. I can also just drag that onto here in Photoshop. And normally what I'll do is kind of play with these blending options to get an effect where I can see some of the sand inside. 
While this is nice, I can see that sand pattern in between the bricks. I can pull the opacity down a little bit. And then another thing I like to do is go to the levels and kind of pull those in a little bit. So that way I get a little bit more definition on top of the bricks and inside. So now we have these little patterns of darkness and lightness in between the bricks. This will add some great variation when we start to paint our alpha inside of Hammer. Now that I'm pretty happy with that, we can go ahead and hit flatten image to just destroy those layers. And then go over to the channel section. Select the blue layer. Select the entire thing. Delete it. And then make sure you fill it completely with black. Do the same thing to the red channel. And now we're left with just this full green image that is our modulation map. There's one thing that we need to do before we save this. The textures that I'm working with are 2048 by 2048, which is extremely large for Source Engine, and you'll never ever really use that. A modulation map does not need to be the same resolution as the textures that you're using it on. You can still get high fidelity and detailed blend maps with a lower resolution image. Lowering the image resolution for your modulation texture can save file size space and some texture memory. If we just go ahead and scale this down to half the size will be fine to 1024 by 1024. Hit OK. Now we can go ahead and save it. I'll just save it as a PNG and call it modulate test. And now I have my modulation texture, my diffuse and normal map, and second diffuse and second normal map. To make creating the VMT a little bit easier, I'm going to use VMT Editor. This is a community tool made by Yanzel, and it's great. There's also a link in the description below. This tool will also auto-convert our PNG files into a VTF automatically for us. I'll change my shader to World Vertex Transition, which is the shader that we need to use for displacements to blend between only two textures. Over on the right, we can see the VMT preview update in real time. I'll select my Diffuse, which is on my desktop source materials, and this base color. I'll click open. I'll also select the bump for that same texture. And I'll set its surface to brick. I'll do the same thing for the second texture. And here I'll select the blend modulate texture. Now I'll set the surface of the second one to sand. We can see that VMT Editor has converted our textures to VTFs. We can now click Save, Save As. And I'm saving this inside of CSGO Materials Tutorial 26. I'll save it as blendmodulatetest.vmt. And after we've saved it, VMT Editor has already updated our texture paths on the right. The VMT parameter to enable the blend modulate is just dollar sign blend modulate texture followed by the path to the texture. If we browse to our CSGO folder, materials, tutorial 26, all of our textures are here. Now we're inside of Hammer and this level may look familiar if you've watched my bootcamp series. This is the texture from Inferno which already has modulation applied to it. We can see that the bricks are kind of stamped out on that plaster texture and it looks very good. The ground here is displacements. So let's go ahead and replace it with our modulation texture. I'll apply that here and the scale is massive because these are 2K textures. We can just scale it down to 0.125 and it should look almost okay. Maybe a little bit more. Another thing to keep in mind is that our base texture should be the behind layer. Which means that if we were creating this texture, the behind layer is the brick and the above layer is the plaster. This makes it much easier to create your blend modulation texture since we're pretty much painting one on top of the other. If I press Shift A to open up the face edit sheet and go to the displacement tab, I can select these guys here and just hit paint alpha. I'll set this to one so we can see the effect come in really slowly. As I start to paint that, we can see that the sand starts to creep in around the bricks. Now you may notice that the bricks are popping out of the sand even though I've painted them fully to 255. This is because parts of the blend modulate map are full 255 on the green channel. To fix this, I'm just going to pop back into Photoshop, go to adjustments, curves, and pull this down just a smidge. I can now flatten the image, and if I open my color picker, 
and click on this hot green spot. It's at 250, which means once I've painted over 250 in Hammer, we should switch to the sand texture. I can save this. And I'm just going to save this as a VTF directly from Photoshop. Now with that image saved, we can go back to Hammer. And as soon as Hammer updates, the sand now shows over the entire brick. If we zoom in on the brick, we can see that the transition between them is super hard and jagged. This is due to how the red channel is set up. Modulate textures, as I said before, use the green channel for the map that gets stamped on, but they use the red channel for smoothing. Back in Photoshop, if I go to my red channel, and then just pick a value of about 15, and fill the entire layer, it doesn't look like anything changed, but there's now 15 out of 255 red inside of this modulate map. I'll save it again. Now when we switch back to Hammer, we can see that these hard jagged edges have switched to be blurred. The red channel controls how blurred the transition is between them. If I were to set the red channel to 255, that essentially disables the modulation mask. Now the red channel does not need to be a full single color. We can use this to get some super advanced blending in between our textures. If I come over here and just start to paint on some different variations, so over here is full, and then we have kind of a fall off. If I go back to Photoshop, and I just go to my gradient tool. And if I just do a quick black to white gradient, if I just select a circle gradient and then just create one in the middle, we can see that the inside has no red and the outside is full red. If we save this just to see what this is going to result in, when we come back into Hammer, we can see that the blend texture is now essentially disabled on the outside here but on the inside, we can still see that the bricks are blended in. If I paint more alpha on, eventually we'll reach the area where the modulate texture is still in effect, which is around right here. In most cases, a full red of the same value will work fine for your modulation. I'm going to purge my red channel and then just set it to a value of about 39 to 40. I'll fill that layer and then we can save the texture again. If we go back to Hammer, our modulation has returned and there's a slight transition between the two textures. I think this looks pretty good and I'm just going to paint this up really quick. And I think that looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and compile it and see what it looks like in game. And here we are inside of game. We can see that the blend modulate texture looks exactly how it does inside of game as it does inside of hammer. There's no gotchas there. It will look the same in both. Now, the only real difference is that we have our normal map applied as well, which is not displayed in hammer. The sand pretty much throughout is between the bricks unless we full painted it on like I did right here. That's about all there really is to know about blend modulate textures. You can just go forth and make your own modulate textures to improve the quality of the displacements tremendously. Thank you for watching this episode of Will It Blend Source Engine Edition, where we created our very own blend modulate texture that will hopefully fit any textures you create for your level. Don't forget to smash that motherfucking like button and subscribe to stay up to date with version 2 tutorial series news. Thanks for watching and praise the chicken gods.